I thought I'd do things a little bit differently this time. Normally, we do this kind of traditional board meeting format, which I think makes sense, given that's kind of what I'm most comfortable with, what I'm used to, um, but but uh, and and also kind of what you know what what most people do. Um, but I wanted to do something different. Um, we like doing things a little bit differently. Thank you. New haircut, cut my hair. Pandemic's over for me, at least emotionally at this point. Um, and yeah, so I thought it'd be fun to just like screen share. And so I'll use the old deck as kind of like a format for the new deck um, or kind of the, you know, kind of the, the, the agenda, I guess, for today. But I'll try not to, uh, like, I, I'll just use it. And then, you know, that way you'll actually see like what I look at. Um, and that's kind of my main goal for, I have two goals for 2022. Uh, one is to be even more transparent to show people more about the way that, like how I actually work and what do I actually do and, you know, as a CEO, as an investor, all of these sorts of things. Um, and then my other goal is to create more equity owners in companies. Uh, obviously the Gumroad Round was an example of that in 2021, but I want to spend a lot of my time this year with the fund, with the scout program, with a bunch of other stuff, trying to, to get more people on cap tables of, of companies. So anyway, that's kind of the framing um, that I would look at, sort of evaluate, you know, am I doing the right thing, right? Um, so yeah, so this is the, the this is the board meeting from sort of a year ago where I started with the story. We can kind of skip this part, um, given that, you know, people already know this, but effectively Gumroad started out 10 years ago, has kind of built up um, into kind of this, uh, you know, e-commerce solution for independent content creators of all sorts. Um, and this is kind of what it looked like a year ago. Um, and this is what it's going to look like very shortly. So we've been rebranding the entire website, um, the logo, like basically everything from the ground up. Um, we started this project not too long after the, the fundraise itself, probably like April, May timeframe, um, and sort of launched the first version, the first batch of updates to our logo and color scheme and everything like that um, on, in, on Black Friday, actually, November 26th, I think it was. Um, and we're rolling out the rest of the stuff and, and everything about Gumroad is changing, like including even like purchases, like it's all it's all here. One nice thing about rebranding everything is you get everything to, to live in one place. So if you look at products and you scroll down, you can see um, the new uh, purchase flow. And what we're currently working on internally is, you know, we currently have this form, which it, or, or this look, right? When you buy a product, you get a bunch of files. Um, we're gonna make this super customizable. So it's gonna look a lot more like Notion where you can customize this stuff. You can of course upload files and do the stuff you've been able to do before, but you'll be able to do that within an interface where you can have like text, headers, lists, all of that kind of stuff. I think it's gonna be really important uh, for kind of like the next the next phase of Gumroad. So this was like the big thing that we got done. Um, we also got a bunch of other stuff done, which people can check out. Um, if you go to our roadmap uh, at roadmap.gumroad.com, it should redirect you here. Um, but this shows you uh, kind of what we what we communicate publicly about what we're working on. And so you can see all the stuff that we got done last year, like we, we got quite a lot of stuff done. Uh, we ship a lot, a lot of this is sort of small incremental features to just make Gumroad UX better for our existing users, for people getting started. And this quarter, this upcoming quarter, we're really, really focused on uh, this new objective called zero to one, right? So this is kind of a riff on Peter Thiel's mnemonic, right? Go from zero to one. Uh, that's where kind of the value is, is most created. And we kind of took that and riffed on it and said, we want to help creators go from zero to $1. Um, and so our next sort of our sort of OKRs for the next quarter are really going to be focused on on this sort of agenda item. Um, what does this actually mean? It means currently, if you go to gumra.com, you're creating digital products. Like, what is what even is that? You know, when we started, we had kind of had to use this like vague word because it wasn't really defined. Even a creator wasn't really defined. Uh, now it is, and so we're sort of saying, you know, you come to Gumroad and you say, I want to create a course or an ebook or an audiobook or an or a membership or a community or all of these sorts of things, and then we'll support these natively, if you create a community, we can actually show you uh, features that are relevant to you instead of all of the other features that Gumroad, you know, sort of has, right, instead of having a single product. Um, and so that's a pretty big, uh, big change. We're also going to include that into our discovery. Our discovery UX is pretty simple. Um, you have these categories, you can see the, the top selling in each category, et cetera, and scroll down. And, and we, we want to make this a lot better. We think this can, should be a lot more like Amazon, where you have categories, subcategories, um, it's a lot easier to say, like, I just want, you know, I, I, I want to buy an ebook about uh, creative writing or something like that, right? Where do you go in this? Uh, you can kind of find it, books and writing, but I think it's not formatted the right way. 
Um, and so it's it's a twofold problem where it's creators, it's kind of confusing and arbitrary. And then it also means that the Discover UX ends up being also kind of confusing and arbitrary. And so I think switching to this this mode is going to help um, help a lot with with with, with that. Um, It'll also be easier for us to kind of do data analytics to be like, well, what are people actually creating? What do people actually want? Um, and, and yeah, so you can kind of go in here and see all the stuff that we're working on, but the sort of overall thesis is basically from zero to $1. That's the most impact that we can have on a creator's journey is helping them get there. That's kind of the aha moment. That's the, you know, the first comment on the WordPress blog, right? That's our version of that. And so everything we're trying to do, you know, redoing the, the checkout experience, bringing back add to cart, moving discount pages, uh, discount codes away from product edit into, into its own page, redoing onboarding. A lot of this stuff is going to be where our, uh, where our, our time is spent. And so this is an internal document, which is we use OKRs or we are starting to use OKRs again. Um, and people can kind of read up about those sorts of things in these, in these two books and, and, and things that I link. Um, and I'll put, I'll put this link actually in the chat so people can see it. Um, but I won't share it too, too publicly, um, but at least people in the chat can tune in and, 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 and see what I'm talking about here. Um, so I mentioned the rebrand, the rebrand is our big project. It's a huge document. We're making good progress here. Um, this is, we're going to write a post about this. So you'll kind of get a deep dive on how we actually like made this happen. Um, we're adding a bunch of KPIs to, to our main gecko board dashboard. Um, so I already shared the brief metrics, but I'll, I'll kind of share the metrics that I look at day to day. So this is kind of like the, the high level. And so this is what I look at, um, 24 hour volume, revenue, um, month to date and volume month to date. These are, this is kind of like the most important, right? These two. Um, and this is basically how much revenue we've done so far today, uh, to date in the month. So for the first, uh, sort of 10 days of January, uh, and then volume, and then this is year over year. Right. So effectively comparing to the same amount of days in January of last year uh, and the same amount of days January of last year, et cetera. And so it's just a really easy way for me to see, like, are we growing and how fast? Uh, and then over time, we're, we're adding more dimensionality to this. I don't think you have to get super complicated, even as a company grows. I think it's actually good to get, kind of keep things simple in one place. We can see our volume for memberships, for example, is up 62 percent year over year. So we definitely want to continue to invest in this sort of thing. Uh, discovery is another big focus for us, as I've talked about already. And so having effectively the way that I think about it is that there should be one number that every single person at the company cares about. It's a different you know, number depending on your job. And then your goal should be to increase that number, right? Like, or decrease that number, you know, depending on, on what that number is. And that's it. Like it should be really, really, really simple. Um, and I think OKRs are kind of like the best formulation of, of doing that. And I think as a team grows and you want alignment, I think it's really important to, to, to have this. So you can kind of see, and then, and this changes, right? So like one thing I'm not a big believer in is like these massive dashboards that track everything. Uh, things change, things are more important, less important over time. So for example, volume for mobile, that's not something we're super actively working on anymore because we kind of did all the improvements that we think we can make on that experience. Um, and so we should probably just get rid of this, right? You should constantly be getting rid of stuff. Like that's a good chunk of what I do. And I'll do the day in the life of a CEO kind of at the end of this. Um, but that's kind of, that's most of what I do actually is basically just saying no, saying we shouldn't be working on that. Um, I feel like that's almost all of, of what I do on a, especially around De December, January, 2022 goals kind of timeframe. But anyway, you can see, so complete rebrand is our kind of number one OKR, then improve our metrics, tracking, not the metrics themselves. So we're going to add SEO, a GMV driven by SEO to it. We're going to add uh, creators who made $1.00. So just like we have, and this is going to become a key metric for us. So just like we have revenue and, and this kind of monthly, we'll list like how many creators did we go, you know, do we help go from zero to one in December, in January, in February, et cetera. And that's going to be a pretty key metric um, that we're going to start tracking. Um, and then dollars uh, process per support ticket, I think is the single metric I'll be using to kind of monitor the efficiency of our kind of support, which should be getting more and more efficient over time, hopefully. Uh, as we get economies of scale and so tracking how much a gmv is actually being processed you know you could write like track creator earnings um for a support ticket and this is just to align them um really i think that's all we really need to do and then we should be good on that one this is just an image to remind people what's going to change about gumroad um, the zero to one push, I mentioned all of the stuff that we're kind of doing. There's obviously more stuff that gets done, right? There's bugs, there's tech debt. I really try to keep this page. Like you can, it almost fits within a page, um, super light, 
like it should be you know it, it was like three or four times longer like two weeks ago and i just was like we don't need this we don't need this um let's keep it really really high level um and so the zero to one push i mentioned uh the new product types which you can see here you know all of these things will will kind of appear we've kind of thought through all of this stuff and we'll be adding them uh in the back end um those will appear in the per product settings and so people will be able to easily see okay this is an ebook um about this topic um we'll update discover search to, to, to kind of you know include that so this, this discoverability should improve and then we should update the navigation finally to kind of include all this kind of stuff and so that's you know that's that this is kind of the download page version of that which is let me see how much of this is designed let's see what's here it's a lot of talk here um yeah you can see all the conversation that kind of goes into this and how we break things down but yeah here's a kind of you know here's like an old mock of that page you know obviously it's very different now um so by the time engineers get to this it'll be kind of cleaned up for them um but you know this is kind of an example of what that might look like right if you say obviously this hasn't incorporated the redesign um but if you say hey this is a course that i'm creating you know then we might want to show lessons and modules and and have automations related to, to you know adding people automatically to slack per cohort removing them discord etc um and so that's kind of an example of what that will eventually look like that we do have to pare this down probably by friday our goal is to kind of get to an mvp of what we want to ship by the end of the quarter um i mentioned moving the discount pages to a different page um profile edit is super convoluted on gumroad right now that's going to simplify we're basically the way it works today i know this is getting very nitty-gritty but this is literally like what running government is, is like, what we actually do. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, so product edit, or what was I looking at? Oh yeah, profile edit, yeah, sorry. So yeah, you can see that we, we moved to this version, right? Where you update the product on the left and then all of the changes happen, propagate on the right. And we felt like this was the best approach to kind of WYSIWYG. We, before we had a WYSIWYG approach where there was one form, but it wasn't perfectly like what you would see. Um, and WYSIWYG isn't honestly the best for stuff like this because you you kind of want to edit in, the, in a UI that's built for editing. Like editing like a pre-order release date is kind of annoying if it was like in this view, you know, where would that actually be? And so we decided to do this and we're basically applying the exact same sort of metaphor, um, visual metaphor to profiles. So right now profiles are edited like this, where you have this like tab bar at the top. I think we took this from like Tumblr or something like that. Um, and you can you you click these and it opens these like popovers, which is kind of janky, um, right? And it, the nice thing about this is it allows us for this kind of full screen approach instead of that like you know that divider. Um, but the divider is important, so we'll keep this. Obviously, you can always go to your profile and see it fully, but we're going to switch profile to be actually in a kind of in settings, I believe, and it's going to be more like this kind of this uh, split view. Um, so I'm excited about that because I think it's just going to make it a lot simpler to actually edit and update your profile. And we have big vision, kind of a, a big vision for profile editing and customization over time. And I think this is kind of a, a prerequisite step to getting there. Um, so that hopefully Q2, our focus will be on customization, um, block-based kind of notion-esque editing, taking that stuff I talked about on the download page and actually bringing them into the profile profile page. And the other stuff like, you know, improving the onboarding with a new homepage state, collecting sales tax, cropping, you know, unsplash, pulling images in, just stuff like that to make onboarding easier and easier and easier. And then we have a bunch of other stuff around marketing, uh, mostly focused around two KPIs, discover GMV and S uh, SEO GMV. Again, really simple, uh, two numbers uh, that should go up over time. And then support uh, internal, which effectively has kind of two, two things this quarter, which is you know increase the number of dollars processed per support ticket, as I already mentioned. Um, and then, and then kind of engineering sort of back end, right? Like trying to make it faster to actually work on Gumroad um, and a bunch of tasks there. And then you can see, uh, we just started using this in Q4. You can kind of see what we got done and what we didn't get done um, in, in, uh, in Q4 of last year. And this is like super, I think everyone should do this if you don't already. It's super helpful to say, well, what did we not get done? Like we thought that these things were important, but we didn't get something done, why? Right, I think it's super healthy to have those kinds of conversations. For example, I decided, like after looking at the community stuff that we we did um, in Q3 and Q4 primarily, that we just weren't seeing the returns, and like so we're getting rid of the community. It just isn't working. Um, and the way that I think about it is like every creator who signs up for Gumroad has to like understand everything about Gumroad, which is like 
that's like adding a new item to like the McDonald's menu, right? Where you have to train every single franchise now that like how to make a milkshake and figure out all the supply chain issues and like what happens if it breaks and this and that. Um, and every new person you hire has to learn this and every new customer has to look, you know, like all these menus have to, like, there's just so much that goes into, to like training a new user of anything. Um, and so I think it's like really important to say, okay, we tried like 10 experiments and three of them worked and let's just double down on those three and get rid of those 10 and try another three. And so we'll do six things this year. And, you know, out of the new three, like one will work or two will work, or maybe all three will work or none of them will work. Um, and I just think it's, it's really important. Like failure is, you know, kind of failure is like defined as failure to not fail, right? Like it, it better, or it's, that's a better way to define failure, I think, than like not doing things. So anyway, let me, let me see what questions people have before I jump to the to slides again and see, see what people are um, asking. Do you have a question that I think will naturally come up? Is best selling on Discover based on ratings or revenue? It's based on revenue. Uh, and specifically number of sales. Um, so the same, same way that Amazon kind of does it, which is highlights number of sales uh, and revenue is a combination of, of a few things, but, but I believe the sort of highest exponent part of the algorithm would be number, number of sales. Awesome. So yeah, that's kind of a preview of all this stuff and how we think about, you know, actually shipping stuff at Gumroad. Um, literally like what I look at, I also have this metrics dashboard. This is like what I use to um, generate the graphs. I'll put this into the, uh, the chat as well. Um, so yeah, what I do is basically since the beginning of the company, every month uh, gets a super, oh, that's kind of fun to see, um, gets a super, you know, super simple. Again, super simple. This is like the, I mean, this is not the entire company. There's always fractal patterns, right? You can go into these things and they get more complicated. Uh, but at a high level, you know, for example, in the month of, and this is because I, we haven't gotten our exact December financials back. So I, I don't know exactly the cogs and expenses yet. So that's why this is still gray. Um, but you can, let's do November. It's a little bit easier, right? So we processed $16.9 million for, you know, that's creator earnings. Our uh, revenue uh, co composed, used to actually compose of two parts. We're simplifying this. Uh, as I mentioned, simplification, really important. We used to have a premium service offering that was making us $80,000 a month. We just got rid of that. And we just said, we just graduated it into the sort of standard gum road so that there's a single fee and that's just fee kind of changes over time. Uh, as you make more sales, that goes down. Uh, and so, you know, soon this basically can net to zero um, and we'll probably do that pretty soon. So that's why we have two columns, you know, at some point this, these will all kind of be zero. Um, and I can kind of actually probably assume zero is probably what I should be doing. These are projections. So we can assume, you know, it'll be a little higher than that because there's still a few people who've kind of been grandfathered into the old plan, but you know, anyway. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, revenue that, you know, effectively these things will be equal over time. GMV, this is just helpful for me a little bit. If you, you know, February has 28 days, some days have, you know, some months have 31. Um, so I have this there. Um, COGS, which is effectively what we spend, uh, which is hosting, payment processing, fraud, risk. Um, and that might be it, actually. Like, that's it to run a sort of a marketplace business, right? You need to accept payments. You need to pay people out. That's payments. You have some fraud and you have hosting, right, to operate the website. You have other fees, like right? you know, Amazon, et cetera. Um, I guess Amazon would be hosting, but Slack is probably a better example where it doesn't correlate with like running gummer.com. And that goes all goes into expenses, right? Um, so you can see basically in the month of November, we had $350,000 of fixed expenses, which is kind of engineers, primarily engineers, designers, HR, et cetera. Um, and that means we, we had a net profit of negative 85,000. So we lost, we burned basically $86,000. Uh, this is, again, this is like super simple. Um, and we made money most of the quarters. One reason we raised money is so we could grow the team faster than we can afford. So we're still doing great. I think we're still up for the year. So not a cause to worry, but um, yeah, it looks like we're up 663,000 for the year. Um, and this was also because we did the big rebrand. We had a bunch of people help out. So this should go down pretty aggressively, pretty quickly um, in December and January, et cetera. Um, so anyway, that folds up into these numbers. And so I look at, I do it kind of per year and per month. Uh, so you can see the per month here since the beginning of the company and then revenue per month here. Um, and so you could see kind of the pricing, the bet, the pricing bet was like kind of a scary one, to be honest, um, which I, we talked, we mentioned here, 
Um, but it was really important. Like I really felt like it was just better. Like our pricing, it just makes more sense. It's the right thing to do. Um, and it looks like this, where it starts at 9% and it goes down at 2.9%, which is effectively what you'd be paying Stripe, which I think in the short term is going to lower the GMV that we do, or sorry, lower the revenue that we do, but hopefully increase the GMV over time. And then we can have value added services for creators that will effectively like make it great for everybody, sort of positive sum over the coming years, right? That's not going to happen immediately. So that's kind of what we saw where rev earnings kind of continues to grow. Revenue has dropped a little bit, um, but I think that's that's okay. And then this is kind of like abstracted out over, you know, uh, blended on a yearly basis. And then I track year over year and year over year uh, for, for both revenue and volume, which is basically what you saw on the Gecko board, right? Those like green numbers. Um, but this is kind of what I look at. And then I have, sometimes I do kind of cohort analysis every once in a while. Uh, to kind of see where the GMV is coming from. Like obviously 2020 was crazy because of COVID um, and then it has kind of peaked and it's kind of, it normally generally stabilizes at around like 80% of the peak. And you can see this on a core basis, all these other cohorts have a similar behavior. And so you can kind of gauge, um, you know, kind of the cohorts over, you know, kind of LTV, I guess, um, pretty easily based on that. So that's metrics and 2021 uh, stuff. I talked about what we're shipping in the future. Um, what else? Uh, does anyone have questions? Any, any, any stuff that people want to uh, ask? Lucas has a question. Uh, sounds like pretty healthy financials. Are there any talks about going public? And let me stop sharing my screen. Are there any talks about going public? I don't know if you're even allowed to say <laughs> if, you, if there are any talks about going public. I think that's like one of the rules of having talks about going public. Um, yes, I would love to go public at some point. Um, I don't want to sell the business. And there's only really two ways to get liquidity. And, and uh, one is selling the business and the other is you know going public, which is effectively kind of quote unquote selling a percentage of your business to the public markets. Um, we kind of went public in a sense in you know, March 15th, we raised $5 million from 7,300 people. Uh, I want to do the exact same thing again. Uh, so let me share a link uh, on how to participate in that. Uh, I will share more and more details about that. Um, but there's more information in the link that I just pasted in the chat. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to know more, just DM me on Twitter at SHL. And I'll, again, I'll share more as we head towards March 15, 2022, which is when we'll be raising another a uh, chunk of cash. Um, but yes, basically the way that I'm thinking about it is that eventually Gumroad will be a public company. Uh, it'll be liquid just like any other public company. What does that actually look like? You know, generally you cannot really go public unless you're worth a billion dollars. It costs around $250,000 a year to, to be a public company and stay a public company and become a public company. Like there, it's not easy. Web3, crypto, all that kind of stuff. People can talk about how that solves all these problems, which is true in some sense on a tech basis, but not on a really a regulatory basis. For, so for Gumbert to go public, um, that is the plan. And I'm talking, like I met with the New York Stock Exchange, I'm having a lot of these kinds of conversations. The plan in the short term is to basically continue to use Reg CF, et cetera, to raise you know these kind of batches of financing at sort of marked up valuation. So we did this last round was 5 million at 100. This next round will be, 5 million at between 185 to 225 million um, based on how the next couple months go for us. Um, uh, I'll pick kind of a number, but it'll, it'll be, you know, kind of assume around $200 million valuation pre-money. Um, and then we'll kind of just, hopefully as part of that, I'll, you know, people who participate in the last round, if they want to sell a proportion and set a buy. Like I'm trying to see if I can facilitate something like that. So it's almost like liquidity, except it's like one event per year instead of 24 uh, seven or what, you know, whatever the stock markets allow. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I'm, how I'm kind of thinking about it. So hopefully, hopefully that answers, answers your, your question. Um, awesome. Uh, George says, do you use a third party for SEO or keep in house? Uh, do it. We do it in house. Um, yeah. We third party, we worked with a third party on the rebrand, but generally I'm not a future. I, I, I think like so much of doing stuff is like learning about how to do stuff, right? And I think when you outsource that, you're not getting the learning enough. Um, so I try to do as much stuff in-house as possible, though, you know, like a, a logo redesign every 10 years, something like that, you're probably not gonna have like the people within the company, right? With the, with the expertise on how to do that. So that's kind of why we did it for that. Uh, Ken asks, what is the current state of competition for Gumroad? How much attention do you 
to compete. Oh, basically, do you do you spend to competing ideas and companies? Um, I do spend time in the sense of like passively, right? Because I'm on the internet, so I'll see stuff all the time, and people DM me, you know, uh, about about competitors and other things frequently. Um, but honestly, not much. Like I, I think the way to think about it is, you know, we have creators. Um, and then maybe we have sort of adjacent creators, right? Creators adjacent to our current creators who don't use Gumroad, but may, uh, what problems do they have? Can we help them? You know, and effectively the way we think about it is like, can we help them make more money? Can we help them save money? Can we, can we help them save time and stress, right? Like if we can do those things, like with some, with some feature or something like that, like we'll, 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 we'll consider that. Uh, Hardik asks, uh, will there be a $1,000 limit like last time? So last time. Uh, we raised uh, five million, and we had a maximum check size of a thousand dollars to allow as many people as possible to participate. There will probably be a limit. It will probably be higher. Um, my guess is the limit will be five to ten thousand um, dollars, and that limit will also kind of go up over time. Hopefully, as we can we can raise more sums of capital. There is a possibility that we can use a different kind of regulation to raise more money. Let's say ten million dollars. Um, and then we could have a different cap. If so, if there's truly demand for that, um, then you know I would love to uh, um, to make that happen. So fill out that form, uh, and uh, and I'll 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 do that. Yes, you can invest. Also, the minimum will be, I think it's last time was like ten or hundred bucks. I think it was hundred bucks. Um, so that will remain the minimum. So if you want to put in hundred bucks or whatever, that's totally fine. You can do it from anywhere in the world. You don't have to be an accredited investor all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not sure exactly the format of the next round. It'll either be another crowd safe or it'll be an equity round. So I'm not sure um, which one it will be. Um, who are our main competitors? That's a good question. Patreon on the membership side, I guess maybe Substack. Um, um, do I think, yeah, what else? Uh, Teachable on the course side, if we get into that. Um, yeah. That's about it. Um, there's there's a bunch. I mean, there's so many that launch every day, you know. Um, but the, the truth is, like, the building the product's not that hard. I mean, it's hard certainly, but becoming like the default in people's minds is really really hard, right? Like the kind of marketing around it of like when I want to sell an ebook, should I what should I use? Oh yeah, Gumroad. Getting that position, kind of SEO in someone's brain, right? Like search, yeah, like that's 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 I think that the 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 most valuable thing you can do. Dan asks, what are you using the money uh, from the $5 million raise for? Just like we did last time, which is basically just growing the team slightly, having a war chest just in case. Um, One-off things is like, you know, we'll probably invest some amount of money in like exploring how to go public sooner rather than later. Um, but mostly just, you know, growing the team and, and trying to uh, improve the product um, and run more experiments. I've also thought a little bit about, uh, this is kind of like plan Z or plan X, which is like, turning Gumroad into like, I'm, I'm having, I don't know, I get bored. I have ideas. Um, currently I can't really work on too many things because I'm working on Gumroad. So I've explored turning Gumroad into kind of an, almost like an incubator of my own ideas and raising money on that sort of premise. Um, but I don't want to make false promises. I don't want to like raise, you know, speculatively. Um, but if there's interest in that, again, DM me, my, you know, DMs are open. I'm, I'm spending the next month or two, like having a lot of these conversations, figuring out what would be best for Gumroad, for me, for our creators and for Gumroad investors. Etc. Um, so yeah. Did the crowdfunding round, Jono asked, did the crowdfunding round act as a marketing event that helped increase creator acquisition or some other metric like revenue? Was it impactful? It definitely was impactful uh, in, in two ways, I will say. One, definitely marketing. Like I think a lot of people saw that crowdfunding round. I think, I don't know what the number was, but you know, in the millions of people, um, most of them are not, you know, creators on Gummer today. Um, so, you know, you can kind of debate like the value of something like that, but I do think it was, it was pretty valuable. The one super valuable thing that we I've seen from it is recruiting. Recruiting is like the hardest thing that most startups have to do. And recruiting has been drastically easier um, because every time I need to hire like engineers or designers, I just put it into an email list with 7,000 people who were invested in the success of the company. Um, many of whom are designers, engineers, or may know some. And so that, that has been like ridiculously helpful. Um, so yeah, the other thing, by the way, I'll mention about the incubator idea that I had um, is that I would love to be able to do more crowdfunding rounds and like Gummer can do one a year basically. Um, and so if I can, you know, and I've tried to convince other founders to do it and some have like Mercury, I helped do their, their WeFunder one. Um, but, 
you know, one hack was like, well, maybe I can just start more companies and spin them out and crowdfund those rounds. So anyway, I'm definitely in a, sort of an exploratory mode, mode right now. Again, as I mentioned in the beginning of the call, like how do I create more equity owners and how do I be more transparent about what I do day to day? Those are kind of my two goals for 2022. Kenneth asks, what user acquisition channels are you primarily focusing on, on for growth? Great question. 100% uh, organic, basically, right now. Um, we've thought, we've tried some paid stuff. It's never really worked. We're open to it. Um, we might, I think the right approach probably for 2022 in, in terms of a new experiment would be to have a sales team again, which we haven't had in like seven years and hire like one awesome single person and try that experiment out and try like sort of manual sales. Sort of one secret of the creator economy is that a lot of the companies, the way that they grow is by, you know, convincing creators, you know, uh, with emails and calls and things like that to use their products and explain to them. And these things don't just get organically adopted all the time. Um, so that's an experiment that we might, we might do. Amanda asks, I invested in the last round. How do we know ROI and tracking that? Yeah. I mean, I think the simple thing to do, and this is what I do personally, um, and I can't, you know, not financial advice, et cetera, not investing advice, but what I do because uh, I have to price the company, right? Um, is I look at sort of public market comps uh, and I and, and private market comps because I have access to some of that data. Um, but I basically say, okay, what are similar companies? Like for example, Shopify uh, is probably the closest um, US, I guess they're not US, but you know, large kind of, you know, mega scale mainstream company that kind of comps similarly to us. I look at their revenue. I look at their PE ratio, these things. Uh, and then I look at sort of what the market pays for kind of, private companies. So right now, so for example, I can say that like generally the benchmark for public traded companies is around 20 X multiples, super simple, super simplified. Right. And so that means if you're doing 10 million in revenue, you're worth around $200 million. Um, that's kind of at the low end. It can go up like to 80, 70, 80. Um, and last year at the end of last year was like up to hundred. Uh, a lot of series A's right now are done at hundred, hundred X uh, revenue multiples. So if you're at a million in revenue, you're at hundred million in uh, valuation. Um, and so I just kind of, you know, imagine like a, you know, kind of like a scatter plot, right. Of like different metrics and dimensions and Gumroad is one of these dots and there are all these other companies. And luckily, because I'm in the industry, like I can kind of, I have more sort of visibility into where the dots are. And so I kind of just say Gumroad seems to be roughly here. And honestly, like my goal is not to get like an amazing deal. If I wanted to get an amazing deal, what I would do is I would pitch a bunch of VCs and I would make them compete with each other. Um, that's not my goal. My goal is to pick up fair price, something I think is fair, offer it to everybody, and then people can decide if they want to participate or not. Um, Eric asks, what percentage of goods sold on Gumroad are digital versus physical? 80 to 90% digital, maybe actually 95% probably digital. Um, good question, you know, because it is kind of existential for us. Like, why do we even support physical if it's so, so tiny? Should we just focus exclusively on digital? We've thought a lot about that. Um, for now, we like having physical because there are a lot of our creators who like want to sell a t-shirt every once in a while. Um, but yeah, definitely kind of a question. Uh, what's your thing around NFTs? Uh, I have thoughts like everybody has thoughts. I tweet my pithy hot takes on it. I own a bunch of NFTs, um, but it's probably not a fit for Gumroad right now, honestly. I think, again, like it's not really what our creators and our adjacent creators want from us and need. Um, but eventually, I think... Uh, I think, uh, you know, they might be interested in that. So we're always open to it and, and we'll do it. I, I, I'm, I'm not personally opposed. Um, so I'm not the blocker here, personally. Um, how are you planning to grow in international markets? Basically, you know, currently everything runs on USD rails at Gumroad. At some point in the next couple of years, we'll probably allow just kind of Airbnb ask where you can price things in different currencies, kind of the simple. I think that's the number one thing that we can, we can do to make that happen. Uh, Matt Mateo asks, will you just raise through CF? Yeah, basically the plan is to raise through regulation, crowdfunding, and then eventually IPO. That's at least how I'm currently thinking about it um, today. Um, and I will likely be using Republic again uh, for that. Yeah, so Republic, by the way, congrats to Republic. They're now republic.com uh, instead of republic.co. So that is a huge, that's awesome. Will music be supported more in future? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Honestly, I think Bandcamp's better at music 
than we are. So I don't I don't think we'll we'll uh, sort of focus on music, though. Obviously, people you use it for that, and um, it works. Lucas asks, do you think the biggest creators in Gumroad are also the biggest evangelists? Yeah, that is the number one. I mean, when I say organic word of mouth growth, um, the reason that happens is because the biggest creators on Gumroad tell other people. They kind of have to, right? Because you can't really not tell people about Gumroad by, you know, when you sell something on Gumroad. But then ho hopefully the people that like it go above and beyond and say, hey, you know, I use Gumroad. It's awesome. One thing that we haven't scoped out in Q1, but we will, um, though hopefully it might fall to Q2 actually, um, is a referral program. So just like, you know, you can sign up for Amazon as an affiliate to Amazon, um, you'll be allowed to uh, to do the same thing uh, with Gumroad. Um, it's complicated. There's a lot of legal complex complexity, but basically you'll say, you know, we'll do something like if you, you know, refer any sales to Gumroad, uh, using Discover, like you'll get 5% of, of all GMV or 10% or something, something like that. So I think that's how we'll start to explore making our creators more, you know, evangelists of the, of the brand. Um, so let me see, that looks like all the questions. Let me see what other things I want to cover. I cover the metrics. I cover 2021. I cover the 2022 roadmap. Um, what else do I want to, I covered all the questions, cover the fundraise. I'll send an email recap with a bunch of the links if people miss them. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to have to DM me on uh, at SHL on Twitter for now. 